Everybody and welcome to Comics from the Future. I'm Andy. I'm Matt. We're here with Infinity Flux Comics out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. This is our bigger show where we show you some of the biggest and best books that you can pre-order by this weekend so you don't miss out on any of the comic goodness. Just head over to infinityflux.net. Make sure you get your orders in by Sunday afternoon, Sunday night, so you make sure you don't miss out because so many people end up missing out and they get very sad. Mm -hmm. And we cannot console them. They are that sad. <laughs> it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart to see a little boy not have the comic he should have pre-ordered. <laughs> but we sternly tell yeah. him, you should have pre-ordered. Poor, poor Timmy. <laughs> poor little Timmy. <laughs> uh, but thank you so much for watching. Again, we've got a great show. A lot of big books this week. It's not as... I would say this show isn't as big as it usually is with number of titles, but the caliber of the books right. is pretty big. Yep. So let's start off with our featured comics. We're going to start with Doom. It says number one. Really, this is just a one-shot simply titled Doom. This is written by Jonathan Hickman and Sanford Green, and the art is also by Sanford Green. Um, this is set in the near future where Dr. Doom and Valeria Richards go on a quest to try to obtain more power than any one human has ever wielded before in an attempt to stop Galactus from bringing about the death of the universe. Hmm. Sold, right? Like yeah. Doctor Doom, uh, Galactus, lots of power. That's all I need to hear. I don't know if they'll like fight or if maybe it's going to be more of a preventative thing to prevent yeah. Galactus from coming. But it doesn't matter because Jonathan Hickman writing Doctor Doom and Galactus. I know. And Jonathan Valerie Richards Hickman is great too. Writing know. Doom again, because if anyone ever read his Fantastic Four run, mm -hmm. one of my favorite runs of Fantastic Four yeah. ever. So to see him return to these characters too is just a super nice thing to yeah. see. Uh and it was I was I was kind of bummed to find out that it's only a one shot. I was, oh sweet, a new Jonathan Hickman now, Doom. Do we know series? is it a little bit is it a larger? Um it is it's six ninety nine, so I can imagine probably. it's probably a little yeah. bit bigger. Also check out this cover. We've got a bunch of like interesting things like that in the middle, uh the Doom wearing the white looks like a uh, Secret Wars, Secret Wars when yeah. he's sitting on the throne. God Emperor Doom, yeah. So I wonder if this is gonna be like you know, we see him throughout different well, times and, that's, and stuff. This on the left is the Secret Wars Secret number War. four, I think, uh -huh. or 12, like where he's kneeled down and all his armor's burned off. Yeah. yeah. A lot of interesting things on here that, like, I like that we know a little bit about this story, but not the full thing. Yeah. And hopefully this is popular enough to maybe spin off into some more Doom. That'll be the coolest thing yet, is like, in, instead of having a six-issue miniseries going to 12 to an ongoing, there's a one-shot that goes to six that goes to 12 yeah. to an ongoing. That would be cool. So well, let's make it all happen. Everybody pre-order this, and we'll get that extended. Uh, so yeah, we have this A cover right here. We have this really cool 80 grand on variant, which that's probably the one I'm going to pre-order. Uh, there is a George Perez variant with Galactus. And then there's a Hildebrandt Doctor Doom variant. Uh, this is the Marvel masterpieces from the trading cards back in the 90s. Just, you put Doom on something, I get excited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you know, this is going to be just full of Doomism yeah. and over the top. And... He's my favorite Marvel villain. Yeah. So I can't wait he, to see. He's up there for me, favorite Marvel villain and just character in general. Yeah. He just chews the scenery. Next up, we have a new one from DC. This is The Boy Wonder. This is going to be a five-issue miniseries, and it is written, the art and the cover is by Junie Ba, who I believe we've seen do some variant covers here and there, but uh, they're finally getting to do a full five-issue miniseries. Uh, I checked out the some of the interior pages. We got some early preview samples of this. Uh, if you're familiar with books like Headlopper or yeah. something like that, it feels very... It's It's cartoony but in a, like a really comic-y way mm -hmm. it's cool it's not it's not goofy but it's very uh stylized so in this it's focusing on damien who has uh was raised by talia al ghul his grandfather Ra's al ghul to be the kind of the prince and to one day take over the league of assassins this is pretty big for this small boy but one day his real father bruce wayne comes in and takes him away to become the new Robin. And what's the thing about that? So he went from being the one sole heir to the League of Assassins mm -hmm. to being one of quite a few Robins, and especially the youngest one 
uh, so far. A really interesting idea in this because it's kind of the juxtaposition of that he's he's kind of dealing with like I went from being super special to like one of many. Yeah. But uh, something takes Batman away from Gotham. He's pulled away on some urgent something. Uh, and that's, of course, when some terrible stuff starts happening in Gotham. It says uh, there's reports of a demon stalking the streets and a string of ab- abductions uh, will have Damien having to team up with previous Robins. Well, there's Nightwing and Batgirl right there. Yeah. Um, so from looking at this, I believe this first issue is going to be him uh, with Nightwing, and I think the second one is him with Red Hood. Okay. So it's probably going in order of yeah. um, Robins. But he's going to have to learn what does it truly mean to be Robin and what is your place in the Bat family as Robin, the importance of it. Uh, it's kind of a lesson he's going to learn. So I think this sounds super cool. Uh, really, I like these original miniseries yeah. that definitely have a distinct look and everything. It's black label, so free of all continuity, probably a little bit more mature, that kind of thing. Yeah, I know, like, I, in the previous pages, we saw Alfred in this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's funny. I think every time you see Batman in this, you never see his face. It's just black with two glowing eyes and okay. stuff. Uh, so it's stylized <laughs> that way, but really, really fun. So... Uh, we've got our A cover here by the creator all around, Junie Ba. We also have a uh, Cliff Chiang cover where you see a couple of the Robins there and Batgirl. <laughs> and Batgirl. I was about to say, I don't, she's never been a Robin. I don't think even in a like an Elseworld thing. I don't think, I don't think so, think Barbara yeah. Barbara has. Stephanie, but not Barbara. Next is Ain't No Grave, number one. This is a new book from Image Comics. This is going to be a five-issue miniseries. Written by Scotty Young, uh, art by Jorge Corona. That's your team on Middle West, on The Me You Love in the Dark, which I loved The Me You Love in the Dark. That series was fantastic. Your artist on Transformers. Transformers, yeah, that's right. So uh, uh, amazing team here. This is described as a macabre Western fantasy tale for mature readers told through a Guillermo del Toro-esque lens. That's a lot, but it sounds awesome. It's about a woman named Ryder. She has a very, or she had a, or she, yeah, she has a very violent past, but she gave it all up when she fell in love and became a mother as well. But uh, that was all taken away from her. Her husband, her child, I don't know if they were killed or, I, I don't know the story, but it does say that it was all taken away and she is going to have to pick up her guns once again to face off against the person who did it. And the person who did it is none other than Death themselves. I'll point it up because Death's above her. But yeah, Death on the cover there. Um, but yeah, so she is going to take on Death in an attempt to, I'm assuming, rescue her mm-hmm. son and husband. And, you know, just just when I thought I could get out, they pull me right back yeah. in is basically the theme of this book, I guess. Pull out the drawers or lift the floorboards where the two guns yeah, are. She's, she's, and... she's going to go John Wick and like sledgehammer <laughs> the concrete and like get I, out the tokens. I and... thought I thought I was out of this life. Yeah. But uh, I think this I hope she awesome. says, I'm thinking I'm back, you know. <laughs> that, uh, yeah, this sounds great. Uh, there are some preview pages, I believe, on previewsworld.com, mm-hmm. I think. Um, or LunarDistribution.com. I think there might be some there too. So yeah, go check these out because uh, Jorge Corona is fantastic. Uh, his pencils, the character designs, you can see they're on the cover, look really cool. So I'm very excited about this one. I think you said on Wednesday kind of gives me vibes of maybe like Six Gun. Six Gun. Combining uh, Western with like fantasy, fantasy supernatural horror. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I love this. And The Me You Love in the Dark I thought was fantastic. This is very different than that. Oh, for sure. But that just... If you don't know Scotty Young's writing chops, they're incredible. Yeah. Just as good as his art. So uh, Yeah, he's so much more than just like cute, fun, Marvel variant covers. Yeah, he's a fantastic writer. Jorge Corona's great art. So I am highly, highly looking forward to this one. Uh, And this, I think, is our only cover. Yeah, Yeah. so far, this is the only cover they've shown. Only one up for order. Next up, we've got Helverine. Uh, So if you're not familiar with Helverine... Uh, he was introduced, I believe, just in the pages of... It was back and forth between Wolverine and, and Ghost Rider. Yeah. Was that, um, that... I, can't, I can't remember the, the name of the... It was just a crossover between those two books. It lasted like five issues. I can't remember the name of the story, though. But but this is by Ben Percy, and the artist is Julius Oda. And uh, so Helverine has appeared in that previous one, mm-hmm. but this is his first solo series. And this is not... Uh, do you remember what the name of Ghost Rider's demon is? Uh, Zarathos. Yeah, it's not him. It's a new demon um, that has possessed Wolverine. But that story, 
uh, that they did before actually happened in the past. But this takes place in the present. So the question is, what has caused this demon to kind of remerge yeah. with Wolverine? What is going to be the thing that is yeah. the instigating act? Well, and it's interesting because, you know, Zarathos is now in that... Um... Uh, the, the Spirit of Vengeance, the new miniseries yeah. with uh, the hood. Yep, that Zarathos is is there. Yeah, Weapon, weapons of vengeance. Thank weapons you from thank you from TikTok <laughs> up there. Yeah, weapons of vengeance. Yeah, that and was the sword so, from last year. Uh, yes. In this one, they don't give us a whole lot of information, but since it does take place in the present, this kind of pulls all of these elements back together. And uh, what is the all new Hellfire Warriors is teased. That's what I want to know, yeah. So, who's that going to be? And is Helverine in this going to be friend or foe? Might even I wonder if he's going to have like berserker rage and be dangerous to all who cross him. Mm. Uh, I feel like this is a character that's just like it's a it's a fine idea, but this is all because of the look. He just looks Yeah, I very, think so probably, you know, yeah. The look came first and then the story followed after. Yeah. But uh really really cool, great Ryan Stegman A cover. Uh, and I believe, I don't know how many issues it's going to be. This is just going to be a mini series, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. uh, so we got our A cover right here. We have a Kasara spoiler variant. We're talking about what the spoiler could possibly be, considering we know what Helverine yeah. looks like. My only guess is this cover may have the, the Hellfire Warriors on it, um, but we'll have to wait and see. It'll probably be released like right before, maybe like the yeah. week before or something, but yeah, we don't know yet. We've got a Kevin Eastman that cover. Cool, yeah. Very cool. We've got a uh, Mark Texiera variant, which it's cool to see him, his take on this because it's almost like what if this character existed back during his run yeah. in Ghost Rider. Uh, we have a Martin Cocolo foil variant, uh, and that one, check with your store about pricing for it. And, of course, <laughs> a Scotty Young uh, just just because Scotty Young's got to do if it's a number one. Yeah, you, you got to have Scotty Scott. Young on. And it. even though we just said Scotty Young is more than the QT variant covers, he also is really good at that yeah, too. Not so ashamed of still yeah, doing yeah. That. These are great. Next is Blood Hunt number two. So we haven't gotten the first one yet, and we we won't get the first issue for a while. I think uh, not till after Free Comic Book Day. I think um, mm -hmm. because our first. Well, I don't know about that. Cause I thought our first look at Blood Hunt number one was on Free Comic Book Day in that in the Free Comic Book Day book. Maybe it comes out before that, but regardless, it's still it's still a little ways off. But number two was already up for pre-order. Uh, in this one, the vampires endless legions are running rampant across the planet, and the Avengers, the fighters of the Midnight Mission, Bloodline, and Dracula are all going to have to join forces to find Doctor Strange because Doctor Strange is really the only one that can do anything about this. But what is left of Doctor Strange after the events of Blood Hunt number one, which we haven't read yet? So I, so that tells me that maybe Doctor Strange is going to be in kind of a bad way yeah. after the first issue of this comes out. But um, yeah, I'm super excited for this event. Um, you know, especially the, the main story. Like uh, we've seen some of the preview pages, and uh, Pepe Larraz's artwork looks great. Uh, I love Jed McKay's writing. Um, so yeah, this should be really fantastic. And the important thing about this is this is issue number two before one has come out. Yeah. So let your store know. For Go sure. ahead and pre-order if you're interested in the series. Uh, because, you know, it's hard for stores to tell when they don't even have their numbers of sales for right. issue number one. Yeah. Uh, so... If it sounds like something you'll be interested in, go ahead and pre-order number two, and that will make everyone's lives a lot easier. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a win-win for everybody yeah. when you pre-order this stuff. So this is our A cover right here, and we also have the red band variant, which is the same as the regular number two, except that the uh, these are all these red band variants are going to be a little bit bloodier, a little bit more mature. I think they might contain an extra page or two uh, of uh, probably not like extra story because if you don't get the red band you don't want to have missed out on that but like just fight scenes yeah like extra more fighting more blood and that kind of thing a little bit more mature and it's um, funny when you use the word term variant it's not the cover it's a variant of the issue yeah it's a it's a variant it's a different book basically yeah. slightly different book um we also have the David Baldion Fangs variant with Dracula. And all the variants, the cover variants, are for the regular edition, That's right. not the red band. Yeah, so if you want the red band uh, version, those extra pages and the extra blood, you need to get the red band version of the A cover because the rest of these are yeah. just the regular book. 
Um, there is a uh, EM Geist variant, and then there is a, a Peach Momoko variant. Very fun. Mm -hmm. And speaking of Blood Hunt, we've got the Amazing Spider-Man Blood Hunt number one. This is going to be a mini series that kind of runs alongside Blood Hunt. And this is by Justina Ireland and Marcello uh, Ferreira. This is spinning out of Amazing Spider-Man number 49. That's like the one Blood Hunt issue within the regular Amazing Spider-Man run. Yeah. And it's supposed to set up what's going to happen in this. Uh, it talks about it's going to reveal Spidey's role in the Blood Hunt, which sounds like it's going to be decently important uh, because he's getting this mini series and it's got a lead in. So, if you are reading Amazing Spider Man, I don't think you necessarily have to read this to understand Amazing Spider Man. But if you see that and you're like, that sounds like a fun story, this is where you, this is the off ramp yeah. you get off on yeah. uh, for this. And as you can see on the cover. It looks like it's going to involve Morbius, but is he going to be friend or foe in this? I feel like all the pre-established Marvel vampires are kind of against these new vampires. Yeah, because it's a seen, whole new a whole new clan of vampires we've that we've Dracula never seen before. Dracula kind yeah. of be not happy with it. It yeah. sounds like Morbius is probably not going to be good with it. Uh, and will Peter Parker going to... Will he have to save Morbius or take him out? We'll have to find out. But this is our A cover for that. We have a blood red blank variant, pretty much your sketch variant. And we have a Casanovas variant as well. And just real quick, while we're talking about Blood Hunt, going back to the red band variant of Blood Hunt number two, that is a dollar more. Because okay. Because there is, because like we said, I, I do think there's maybe an extra page or two. It's a little bit, it's just a little bit extra. I think poly bagged as well. Yeah, so it's a it's an extra, it's a, the the um, main books are four ninety nine. The red band is gonna be five ninety nine. And next is Transformers number eight. Um, this is just one of the best books on the stands right now. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, the Autobots and Decepticons have to make some tough, some tough choices in order to survive on Earth. And it says that the return of blank will change the war on Cybertron forever. I don't know who that is. It does I not tell us. I wonder if it has to do with the character that was talked about in the previous issue. I think maybe it is. That maybe a certain character gets rebuilt yeah. or brought back somehow. Because that, if out of characters, that's a character that could change Absolutely. the course of yeah. this war. I think so too. So it's like, I mean, hello, just take him to the Junkions. I mean, you know, it <laughs> happened in the 86 movie. So, you know, they, they fixed him up quick. Uh, so yeah, uh, super good. Love Transformers. It's one of the best books on the stands. And Jorge Corona, you know, yep. on art there too. Uh, so we have our uh, A cover right here, and then we have a Corona and Mike Spicer variant as well, featuring. I always get the I always get the non Star Scream ones mixed up. Uh, is that Skywarp or I think Thundercracker's the purple one? Okay, so maybe this is Skywarp, or maybe it's yeah, or maybe it's maybe it's not blue. Maybe it's just the lighting. I don't know. Yeah, and then there's. Jetfire, who we saw originally in yeah. Void Rivals. There's a lot of plain guys. Yeah. Okay, next up we've got Ultimate X-Men number three. I'm excited about this one because initially when I saw this cover, I thought, okay, that's, you know, Armor and Maystorm. No, that is actually both Maystorm. Because really? this is the the Maystorm's mysterious origin Oh, reveal. yeah, you can see that earring right here. Yeah, because uh, mm. her name is May Igashar Igar Ashi, Igar Ashi, uh, discovered her amazing powers that changed her hair from brown to white. Okay. Uh, we're going to find out how she came to idolize a mysterious freedom fighter in Africa who also has similar storm powers. I knew I read that somewhere. Yeah. Remember, yeah, that's... So I think this is going to be a really interesting one because we may actually see some of Ultimate Black Panther, or at least Storm from Ultimate yeah, Black Panther. maybe like a in, flashback or a something. A flashback, or maybe her seeing it on <laughs> yeah. TV or something like that. But this is what I really want. I, I've liked the first two issues of the Ultimate X-Men, but I feel like we still don't really know a whole lot about the characters mm -hmm. and everything. This feels like one of the first, like, hey, let's take a step back and show a character's origin from the beginning and yeah. everything. And something that's that's interesting too is I was reading ahead the solicitations, I think for maybe number five or something. And, you know, we've talked about, are, are these characters in this book even mutants? Do mutants even exist in this new Earth or whatever? But it does reference in the solicitation about Maystorm being a mutant. Okay. So mutants are, I guess they are mutants. Uh, I don't know, you know, Hisako has the charm. I don't know if that activated her powers or what, but 
still so many questions, but you know, you, you, we get little nuggets of information in, in various places w that we can piece together. Yeah. So I think this sounds like a super cool issue. Don't miss out if you have yet to subscribe. Maybe you've just been picking up issue by issue off the stands. Go ahead and subscribe to it because stores, especially at this point, are starting to kind of fine tune their ordering numbers. Not to say they won't over order enough for on the shelf, but like if this book takes off, like this is a hot issue, mm -hmm. um, you don't want to miss out on it. So go ahead and subscribe to the series to make sure you don't miss it. Uh, we've got our A cover right here by the writer and artist Peach Momoko. And we have a Betsy Cola variant, which is that, is that a, that almost looks like a new character? Uh, I don't know. I, I could be his, it could be Hisako, I guess. I guess so. Yeah. We have a Dustin Wynn variant and another Peach Moko. No, that's a new character. Okay. That almost looks like Psylocke. Maybe. And who are these two people next to her? So, because, and this solicitation doesn't say anything about that. It doesn't say about anything that. about that, but it always helps to look at the variants. This could yeah. be... I'm not, I'm not, you know... We're not saying for sure, we're but we're, sure, we're... But looking at that character definitely gives me Psylocke yeah, vibes. Yeah, for sure. Well, next is Geiger number two. All the Ghost Machine stuff sold out gangbusters here. Well, we sold out, right? Sold out of, of all everything. Of uh, and it was all fantastic. And now uh, Geiger number two is up for pre-order. So if you missed out on the first issue of, of Geiger, um, definitely get your pre-orders in for number two. This In this one, Geiger and his two-headed wolf and their new traveling buddy, Nate, they are still traveling the, the countryside looking for the person who could maybe possibly cure Geiger's condition. But first, they'll have to help a local sheriff uh, catch and kill a masked raider that's pillaging the town, which uh, that sounds pretty easy for Geiger, except that what he discovers while doing this will chill him to his glowing green bones. So what is that? I don't know. But uh, it's awesome. The first issue was awesome. Now, um, all three issues, Rook, Geiger, and Redcoat, all came out on the same day last week. Uh, this is the only Ghost Machine book on FOC this week, so I think they are going to like start to spread out yeah. a little bit, which I'm in favor of. Like, if we got a cool Ghost Machine book every week, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, sign me up. So yeah, just definitely wanted to make sure you uh, don't miss number two here. So this is our A cover, and then we have an Ivan Rice variant as well. Really cool, featuring his glowing green bones and his dog. Barney. And his dog, yeah, and his little dog too. <laughs> Next, up, we got other number ones. There's a bunch of number ones this week. And a really cool book, so we want to continue that with this one. This is Energon Universe 2024 Special Number 1. Now, this is one we talked about on our shorter show on Wednesday, but uh, this is important to bring up to clarify a little bit. So, Energon Universe 2024 Special Number 1, as we know it, uh, is a reprint of the free comic book day Energon Universe book that will be coming out, I believe, four days before this comes out. Now, Marvel did something similar to this last year. Uh, theirs, they collected both of their free comic book day books into one book. Um, and then, but it, I think it was a couple months later. Yeah, it was much later, you know. This, this is, is like this a few days this, afterwards, you know. So I'm saying we, as of right now, this is what we know. The solicitation for this, everything, is basically like copy and paste from the free comic book day book mm -hmm. just with you know saying that you know relive the magic basically yeah. uh four days ago when you read this <laughs> uh so i didn't want people to be confused and be like oh there's another big inner john universe book from what we know this is the same book now if you're a completionist or somehow you're gonna miss out on the free comic book day books uh for some reason, and you want to pay actual money for yeah. them instead of them being free, you can pick this one up. It does have a different cover by Daniel Warren Johnson, and I believe the Free Comic Book Day book has a Ryan Otley cover. Yeah, I just I feel like this is they're releasing this so that you know because there's not everybody can attend Free Comic Book mm -hmm. Day, and I don't think even every shop participates. participates in, yeah, and I feel like um, you know. The Energon Universe stuff is super hot right now, so I'm, I, I assume that we'll probably run out of all of ours. Like, I, they're probably going to run out everywhere. And I just feel like, you know, they wanted to make sure that if you can't attend Free Comic Book Day, you can still get the book. Right. But you just got to, 
you know, you got to buy it. You know, if you can't get the free comic book day one, it will still be available for four bucks. Yes. So that's our information currently on this, but I still, I get excited seeing this. Yeah. It's still a great cover. <laughs> yeah. Danny Warren Johnson. So this is, it actually has a variant. So this is yeah. our A cover. And then we have a uh, Lorenzo de Felici variant as well, who is your Void Rivals artist. That's right. Next is a new book called Crocodile Black. This is going to be a five-issue miniseries from Boom. This is written by Philip Kennedy Johnson, and the art is by Somnath Powell. And this is about a guy named Danny. He, um, he's... His life is kind of spiraling out of control. He is uh, he's he doesn't have control of his own life. Uh, but one day on a delivery job, he witnesses something that will change him forever. And it says, turning things as dark as the black crocodile skin boots he can't take his eyes off of. And you can see him wearing those on the cover. And they kind of look like maybe they're outlined in blood or something. And I kind of wonder if maybe the boots have some, something to do with what he saw. Or I don't know. But um, this was just announced. Uh, Philip Kennedy Johnson just announced this less than a week ago, I think. Yeah. And some other writers have already said that they've read it and it's fantastic. Wow. So it sounds like a really cool new, maybe like a crime noir book. Maybe some supernatural elements. Maybe not. I don't know for sure. But yeah, just a brand new Philip Kennedy Johnson book. Of course, he did fantastic on Action Comics. He's killing it on the Hulk right now. And then now this is his new uh, independent book. So just uh, you know, grab that if you like that work. And I believe this is the only cover we yep. have as well. Next up, okay, this is actually a trade paperback. But we want to include it because this is Blood Strike Bat Battle Blood Book 1. Uh, this, the I don't want to say the rumor is, but uh, there is a possibility of more Blood Strike coming after this. And this is, it's just an interesting thing. So, Bloodstrike, the Rob Liefeld created character. This is written and drawn by Rob Liefeld. Uh, originally, back in 2015, two issues of Bloodstrike came out. This is kind of supposed to be a new, like, era for these characters. Mm -hmm. And this included um, characters, not the main young blood characters, because he doesn't have the rights to those right. anymore, but some ancillary characters of young blood and Blood Wolf. Uh, another classic image property from the 90s. Um, two Wait, who? Blood Wolf and who? And characters from Young Blood. Oh, okay. Uh, and so two issues came out. Two more were solicited but never released. Now this sounds like this is going to be a collection of the issues that came out and the issues that hadn't come out yet. Uh, we know Liefeld is kind of stepping away from doing Deadpool-related mm -hmm. things. And it looks like he's turning his attention back to his original properties. Uh, I think this sounds really fun. I yeah. have a great nostalgia for all... If I see a 90s image number one book, I am strongly compelled to pick yeah. it up. And I'm going to be checking out this. I think it sounds really fun. It's going to be, I believe, $12.99 uh, for four or five issues. I think it's four issues of this blood strike. It is very mature. It is mature, so don't buy it for your underage kids. Yeah, uh, I know <laughs> we're kind of used to um, the kind of image that was like mature, but in a like a, a like what a 12 year old thinks yeah. is super mature. No, this is actually mature, mature. Uh, so I think this sounds really fun. It's 160 pages. Uh, check it out if you are interested. And next is. Butcher's Boy number one. This is the first issue of a new... Well, I don't know if this is a miniseries or an ongoing. Um, it doesn't give us like the issue count. But this is a new book from Dark Horse. This is written by Landry Walker, and the art is by Justin Greenwood. Now, the story of this is that over a century ago, there was a town in the Pacific Northwest uh, that fell victim to the brutal cleaver of the Butcher of La, La Perdita. And since that time, you know, from, from the 100 years back until now, the story of that massacre has been just reduced to myths and legends and also clickbait folklore that uh, you know tourists get told when they come to visit, that kind of thing. But some say that the butcher still haunts the streets at night seeking fresh meat. And you know, is that a true story or is it just the fever dreams of a mentally unstable serial killer? Six friends on a road trip are about to find out. So this sounds like a really cool, maybe like a like a slasher thing. I don't really know for sure, but it sounds really fun. I like uh, horror books like this. Uh, it kind of gave me vibes of maybe like, 
a little bit of like nail biter because yeah. there was like so much mystery steeped in in the town. There was so much like uh, that the town had been through in the past that the townspeople didn't want to let uh, let on about. So this kind of gives me vibes of that. But I think it sounds really fun. And this is our only cover as well. Next up, we have a new Exo Manowar. This is Exo Manowar Invictus number one by Becky Cloonan and Michael Conrad. Uh, who they actually wrote the previous volume quite a few years ago. No, so Valiant is now with Alien Book, mm -hmm. and I'm excited to see that they are slowly kind of rolling out some of these characters again. I was a big fan of Exo Man of War back when Robert Vendetti wrote it. Yeah. Uh, really, really cool, and it made me really like this character. Kind of like Conan the Barbarian if he got thrust in the future and became. Iron Man. Right. Uh, That's a really good description. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so, it's like, return this classic Valiant character. Exo on this is going to get sent on an Odyssey, which kind of uh, feels like his more, like, mythological past that tests his power and loyalty. But his armor, which is sentient, uh, suddenly goes quiet. Oh. Um, so, what is all of this about? It actually sounds like a lot of Exo in the past has been based around kind of earth um but this sounds like it's going to be more of like multiple like planet hopping space adventure so if you like that kind of thing check out exo man of war because i really like the character i really like becky clune and michael conrad's writing so sounds really fun this is our a cover and then we have a wilsmer variant as well it's got that cool like laser sword thing. He's got Miles Morales' Venom Saber. <laughs> oh, that's where it <laughs> That's came exactly from. what it looks like, but no, his came first. Next up, we got notable twos and threes continuations of series that may have started, maybe not have started yet, but you need to order the next ones. This is The Principles of Necromancy number two. The first issue came out this week, and I was pretty floored with how good it was. Not that I was expecting it to be bad, but like it was really good. Um, and I wasn't expecting a lot of what was in it. Um it, I said it on Monday that this gives me vibes of like some kind of maybe like a horror anthology book with mm -hmm. the only connective tissue being this character that you see uh, in the middle there, Dr. Jacob Eyes. Um, and in this one, the mother of a young girl named Eloise McAllister, and you can see her on the cover there. Well, her mother has a terrible sickness in her mind, one that Dr. Eyes thinks that he can use to finally conquer death. He thinks he can cure her and use that method to conquer death, which is what... He, that's, that's his thing. He wants to cure uh, injuries and illnesses, but also death. And Eloise says that she'll let him operate on her mother under one condition. He teaches her how to use magic. And it says that Eloise will learn to become a necromancer. And the dark secret of Dr. I's origin is revealed. Mm. So based on that, I'm not 100% sure if this is a, a kind of horror anthology or Because the first issue was one and done. You can read it and be done and never read another issue and still have a full story. I wonder if maybe that was just an introduction to this character. And then now, maybe with this one, maybe the story will continue. Or maybe this is a one and done as well. I don't know. It's kind of just about Dr. Eyes and his uh, journey to try and create you know, uh, invincibility. Yeah. To immortality. Immortality. Yeah. And maybe like every couple of issues that'll be like a new like maybe you found a new way to do yeah that. something like that but uh, the first issue was really good a lot of body horror in it yeah uh, a lot of disturbing imagery but it was still really cool so cool I, character design yeah I, so i'm excited to check this one out uh with you have our we have our a cover right here by Eamon winkle who is your uh interior artist and then we have a <laughs> jonna heidersdorf variant Let's, uh. very creepy i want somebody to cosplay that at dragon con or something yeah <laughs> that, that'd be great Next up, we've got Miss Marvel Mutant Menace number three, just continuing this new miniseries. Uh, we've seen, you know, Miss Marvel as a mutant is going to continue on into the new From the Ashes X Men uh, stories. And it sounds like this is kind of a continuation into what her new status quo is going to be. But in this one, Kamala's mutant friends are turning into zombies. Mm. So you see uh, zombie Cyclops on that cover. It looks pretty cool. Maybe it's going to lead into a new Marvel Zombies. Ooh. Marvel Zombies Volume 8 or whatever they <laughs> left off. I don't know. Uh, so we've got our A cover here. We have a Mahmoud Asrar variant with her black costume. Yep. And we have a Peach Momoko, which if you look around, you see some very zombified looking versions. More, of more body horror, it looks yeah. like. Next up, we got cool covers. 
just really cool covers that are maybe past issue ones, twos, and threes, but are so cool, you got to yeah, see they're them. They're still cool. Uh, first is Batman number 147. This is part three of the Dark Prison story arc that they're going through right now. Batman has to fight against Zur and Awe with no allies, no weapons, and no hope. Uh, but the, And the world is soon going to know Zur's true power and his new sidekick. Robin, it may, it might be Damien. Uh, you know, he's been palling around with the failsafe uh, robot, but he's a little bit fishy. He's a little bit uh, weirded out by it as well. So who knows? I guess we'll have to wait and see. But this is our Jorge Menez variant. And then we have a John Jang Ghostmaker and Clown Hunter AAPI month, uh, or AAPI Appreciate Heritage Month, darn it, uh, variant as well. And next up, we've got Birds of Prey number nine. Uh, I really liked the last issue, and I was interested to see where it goes from here, as the uh, Birds of Prey have one mission, protect Barbara Gordon at all costs in the strange new world they find themselves in after she got kind of uh, pulled through or maybe jumped through a portal mm. in the previous issue. Uh, so we've got, this is our Educure, uh B variant, and then we have a Philip Tan uh, AAPI month variant. I like that a lot. Really cool, Cassandra Kane. And next is Shazam number 11. Uh, this in, in this one, the, the Vasquez want to adopt the kids that they're fostering, you know, the, the Shazam family, basically. But they have to pass a home inspection by the adoption agency, which should be fine. They're great parents. However, the gods recently rebuilt their home after Shazam and Black Adam had a big fight uh, and destroyed the whole thing. And so now there's all kinds of weirdness. There's weird interdimensional creatures <laughs> and portals and stuff. And can the family prevent the adoption agency from seeing all that weird stuff so they can adopt the kids? So that sounds really fun. And this is our Serge Acuna variant. Next up, we've got Poison Ivy number 22. And this one's big because this is part one of three of the explosive climax of year two mm. of Poison Ivy. This is this is the uh, poster child of started as a mini series, yeah. got moved up to twelve issues, and now is an ongoing, very popular ongoing series. And so, yeah, celebrate two years absolutely of Poison Ivy that was originally it was only supposed to be six issues. This is our fantastic Frank Cho variant, and we also <laughs> have this is our uh, uh, Johnson variant as well. Next is Miles Morales, Spider-Man number 20. We just wanted to show you this really cool Goran Parlov variant in this one. Miles is kind of having trouble keeping up with all of his responsibilities and commitments, babysitting his baby sister and uh, fighting crime with Shift and going out with, uh, shoot, I just forgot his girlfriend's name. Starling? Starling, yeah, yeah. thank you. Um, so he's having trouble just juggling all of that, uh, but he has no idea that it's his whole world is about to get turned upside down, so... Yeah, that doesn't sound too fun, nope. but the cover looks good. Next up, we've got Star Wars Mace Windu number four. Uh, this one sounds really cool. This is introducing the Shroud, the leader of the new cult that's going to get, uh, that's in the issue right before this. And Mace has never trained to deal with something like this. Uh, so it's almost like every issue of this is like introducing a new thing, uh, which is really cool. But we've got some great variant covers for this. So this is our Phantom Menace 25th anniversary variant with Boss Nass. And we have a Phil Noto Master and Apprentice variant uh, with, with Snoke and Kylo Ren. This is Carnage number seven. This is the Nick Klein Stormbreakers variant featuring Ghost uh, Carnage as a as a Ghost Rider, Carnage or, Rider, or maybe Ghost Rider as uh, with a Carnage symbiote. Yeah. Who knows? It could go either way. Uh, in this one, Liz Allen makes a discovery that changes the symbiote balance of power forever, mm -hmm. which is interesting because we've said you know uh, before that it feels like everybody and their brother has a symbiote now. Maybe Liz Allen is going to find something that makes it not that way anymore. Yeah. I don't know, but uh, yeah, this cover we just wanted to show you how awesome it was. Next up, we've got Gun Honey Collision Course number one. We'll be going over the new Gun Honey series in future weeks when it actually the main thing drops. But this is, uh, you have to put your order in early for the Derek Chu foil variant. I really like the Gun Honey series, which is kind of hard case crime and uh, yeah. all that kind of fun stuff. So if you want the foil version of the Chu variant, you have to place your order early for that. And next up, we've got graphic novels and more like second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth printings of things. 
uh, really cool stuff and a quite a bit this week in yep. this category. So we're going to start with the absolute edition of Batman Death of the Family. Not Death in the Family, but Death of the Family. <clears throat> this collects um, the New 52... Uh, Detective Comics number one, and then the new 52 Batman series numbers 13 through 17, where the Bat family kind of, uh, it's, it's, it all comes to a head with the Joker basically. And there's a big, uh, you know, there's a, there's a, uh, the, the ending of it is pretty crazy and pretty big, has a lasting impact on the Bat books for a while after that. Uh, yeah. And it's all getting collected in a, um, creepy, slip uh, case. absolutely. Yeah. Slip case because in detective comics, number one, he actually cuts his face off just like that right there. And they, they turn it into a slip case. So good yeah. job, DC. Uh, and this one's going to be a hundred dollars. Yeah. These are big oversized. You yeah. can really read it. Well, mm -hmm. usually have a lot of like the pencil stuff in the yeah. back of it. So uh, very cool in there. Next up we have Batman and Robin adventures omnibus. Uh, this is the Batman and Robin series, I guess from the, 90s to I don't know if it reached into the 2000s. I don't, I don't this think This is so. the second series after yeah. Batman the Animated Series. Uh, this is Batman and Robin Adventures, uh, and this is has collects issues one through 25, two annuals, the Lost Years one through five, and Sub Zero number one plus more. So if you want some of that classic uh, Bruce Tim, this is style. Uh, this is by Ty Templeton and Paul Dini. Uh, just really great stuff. It still holds up really, really well. Uh, and this one is going to be... Uh, this is $75, which is not too bad for an omnibus. Right. And next is <clears throat> the first trade paperback of this new Flash series that started last year. Written by Sas Ferrier. The art is by Mike Diodata Jr. Uh, this is going to collect... So this is twenty. This is nineteen ninety nine, and it's going to collect Flash number one through six, which sounds pretty standard for a six issue trade paperback. But it's also going to include the Titans Beast World Tour Central City oh. book, and also a story from Flash number eight hundred, which I think there was a story in Flash number eight hundred that led into yeah. this run. So it's probably going to be that. But yeah, if you've missed out on this run so far, uh, this is the first trade. I feel like this would probably read well all together. I so, think so too. It, yeah. <laughs> you know, you can you can keep up with the craziness, mm -hmm. but it also has a variant. Oh yeah, it does have a variant by uh, Dan Moore. I forgot. So DC is starting to do this now, which you know we see this with omnibuses a lot. Yeah. There's a, uh, a, a direct market version and a standard edition cover. Uh, the direct market version is reserved for comic book shops like ours, and then standard edition is the one you can get at like a Barnes and Noble or an Amazon or something like that. So this cover, um, but they're starting DC starting to do this with trade paperbacks yeah. now. This cover is the direct market cover, so this won't be available on Amazon or Barnes & Noble. You will have to get it from a uh, comic book retailer like InfinityFlux.net is where you yeah. can pre-order this right now. Go do it. It's there. And this is this is a variant for number one, yeah. which I bought this variant. That's the one I got too, it's yeah. it's so great. Next up, we have New X-Men, the modern epic collections, which I love they're doing these because these are, I feel like these are really important stories in the foundation of kind of modern Marvel storytelling. Yeah. And this is for New X-Men by Grant Morrison. I really like this. This is a very weird uh, run of the X-Men, mm -hmm. but did a lot of things. This really brought in Emma Frost as a key player in the yeah. X-Men, not just a villain or Hellfire Club, but she was brought in as kind of one of the leaders of the X-Men. This is where you get Cassandra Nova. You get a lot of really interesting uh, storylines, plus the mutant's next mutation. This is when Beast turns more cat-like. Yeah, and Emma got her diamond skin. Yeah, so really, really fun storyline here. If you've never read it, I feel like this is kind of one of the, like, if you're reading the big stories in X-Men, you don't want to miss this one. And uh, it collects New X-Men 114 through 126 and the annual for $44.99. And if you watch the new episode of X-Men 97, perfect timing. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of the characters, too, that appear in that appear in this for the yeah. first time. Uh, kind of the new class of young mutants. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, the one I am very excited about. Uh, this is the Spider-Man by David Michelinie and Eric Larson Omnibus. Uh, this is a new printing of it. So this collects essentially all of Eric Larson's run on Spider-Man, both in <clears throat> excuse me, both in Amazing Spider-Man and the Ejectiveless Spider-Man. He uh, he followed Todd McFarlane uh, on Amazing Spider-Man, and then he followed Todd McFarlane on just Spider-Man. The only thing I'm confused about this is 
the issues that it lists for just the Spider-Man title, because um, Eric Larson only did like I think issues like eighteen through twenty-three. It was the Revenge of the Sinister Six mm -hmm. six-part storyline. But in this solicitation, it says collect Spider-Man number. 18 and then 21 through 24 or something like that. And it doesn't sound like it's the whole thing, which would be crazy because it's it's a six-part story yeah. and it doesn't sound like it collects all of them. I think that's got to be a mistake. I don't know why they wouldn't include parts two and three or whatever. But regardless of that, uh, Eric Larson, I mean, everybody talks about Todd McFarlane on Spider-Man and this and that. Eric Larson, I love his Spider-Man. I love this era of Spider-Man. It is so good. This is going to be $100. Um... Uh, yeah, just all of all of Eric Larson's stuff on Spider-Man. Uh, so this is our standard edition cover, and then this is the um, direct market variant. You know, and Eric Larson was the one responsible for the tongue and all of this yep. stuff. Before that, you know, he just sort of had a normal mouthy face. <laughs> mouthy face. Yeah. Quit mouthing off. Venom. Yeah. And then we also have another uh, Spider-Man omnibus. This is the complete black costume saga omnibus. Uh, this is going to be $125, and it collects the entire Black Suit Saga from Amazing Spider-Man, Spectacular Spider-Man, Web of Spider-Man number one, uh, some issues of Marvel Team-Up, and a couple other things. So just from the time he got the black costume, it doesn't say Secret Wars number eight, though. Um, so Sounds like that would have been a nice little add-on. Yeah, so I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if that's in here, but like probably, you know, this is Amazing Spider-Man 252 when he first came back to Earth with it. And then just that whole era... Of um of him having the the black costume before he knew what it was. So this is the standard edition cover, and then we have the direct market variant, and that's your web of Spider Man number one cover. I love that. So that's I'm super great. excited for both of these. Next up, we have a new facsimile from DC, and I think this is a cool one. This is Our Army at War number eighty one, and this is the first appearance of Sergeant Rock and Easy Company. Oh, yeah. uh, I, I think this is really cool. Uh, I think they're putting out a new figure from McFarlane, uh, right. Sergeant Rock. It's like, let's take some of those characters that maybe haven't got a whole lot of love uh, in a while and, you know, refresh people's memory of them. So I like Sergeant Rock. I think he's a super cool character. Even when he, like, meets up with Superman on occasion and they have yeah. like, weird crossover adventures. Uh, if you've never read his first appearance, check this one out. Well, we also have, um, speaking of the black suit... Uh, era of Spider-Man. This is the facsimile edition to Amazing Spider-Man number 256, and this is going to be in that omnibus we just talked about because he's still wearing the black suit. Uh, they're just doing facsimile editions of all the different, you know, from 252 onward, you know, that whole era of him wearing the suit. And yeah, this is the um, going to be the facsimile with all the ads and all that good stuff. And I think there's a foil too, probably. Yeah. yeah. And then we also have, this is a big one. So this is the... Um, Facsimile edition of Avengers Annual number 10. So this is your first appearance of Rogue. This is uh, this involves Spider-Woman and the X-Men. And this is where, you know, Charles Xavier um, first uh, meets Rogue after she absorbed the powers of Captain Marvel. So this is where sort of all that takes place. Uh, so if you haven't read that, uh, this is a great way to do it, complete with all the ads and everything. And we've got some new printings of some books that we talked about we just sold out of. So they are doing second printings of all of your number ones of the new Ghost Machine books. We've got a Geiger number one second printing, a Redcoat number one second printing, and a Rook Exodus number one second printing, which are the wraparound covers like the other ones. But if you miss out on those, maybe you're excited for Geiger number two and you said, whoops, I actually didn't get number yeah. one. Uh, definitely pick these up because I'm guessing a lot of stores have sold out of them as well. And this comes out, actually, so Geiger number two comes out on May 8th, and then these, well, these come out on May 8th, too. So if you did miss uh, Geiger, mm -hmm. you could get issues one and two uh, both on the same day. Yeah. And then we have the second print of the new Deadpool number one, which I think just came out last week. This is great. Like, I'm not that big of a fan of Deadpool in the comics, but I was surprised how much I loved this issue. Uh, so yeah, if you passed on it and now you are heeding my recommendation to read it, you can get the second print. It's a really good cover. Too. Yeah. Super action-y. And Rat City, another one that came out last week, uh, is going to a second printing. This one was kind of a sleeper hit. Uh, you know, I don't think a lot of people knew, especially the title like Rat City. It's not like Future Spawn yeah. or something like right, that. Yeah, no, right. It's, it's an interesting uh, title. So I think once people found out what this is and it's a new character... A new spawn, people went crazy and bought it all up and is going to a second printing with this great design variant yeah. 
uh, where you really get a good picture of kind of his suit, his cape, all of that. And that is it for comments from the future. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, definitely head over to infinityflux.net. Place your pre-orders right now. Everything you pre-order, you get 10% off of. Whether you shop in-store or get it mailed to you, it's super easy to do that. Set up pull lists, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and remember to subscribe to our channel as we ever creep closer to 3,000 subscribers. Uh, just continues to help us share the good news of comics with everybody and how much we love them. Uh, and we have a video coming up on Monday where we'll be going over some of the biggest books coming out next week. So don't miss out on that. And uh, stay tuned because coming up in a couple of weeks, we'll have our big free comic book day show. Yeah. We're going to start teasing that where we'll be reading pretty much all of the free comic book day books and letting you know beforehand uh, so you know what to go in. If your store maybe only says one per or, you know, you only get one if you buy something. We want to narrow in on ones we think you will really like. Or if you just want to hear about all of them, mm -hmm. uh, stay tuned for that. That'll be coming up in a few weeks as we get closer to Free Comic Book Day. And I think that is it for this time. Drop us a, a mask emoji for Dr. Doom's mask, oh, you yeah. know? If you made it this far, I think there's some kind of emoji where a guy's wearing a mask or something like that. You know, get creative. And just let us know that uh, you made it to the end. Yep, absolutely. And until next time, see, see ya. ya.